So the seed grant is a fantastic opportunity for us to bring together a number of Stanford researchers and some researchers from outside to really give us novel insight into the pathogenesis, in other words, the disease mechanism of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Uh, we have a clinical center here, really one of the only ones on the west coast of the United States for understanding this condition. Uh, and, and we also are lucky to have uh, faculty such as Jim Spudich, who's here in biochemistry, a really world-renowned scientist uh, in the science of molecular motors, so the proteins that cause muscle to contract. We're also able to collaborate with another researcher outside of Stanford, Dr. Leslie Leinwand from the University of Colorado. And together, uh, we've, we've put together a, a proposal uh, that will look at, really from the molecular level all the way through to the patient, uh, how, how we understand hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. For the first time, we've been able to generate the human version of the protein, myosin, in sufficient quantities that Dr. Spudich's lab can use his system for trapping literally one molecule and measuring the force from one molecule. So we can mutate the, the molecule in the same way that it, that it is in our patients who come into my clinic and look at it on a single molecule basis. We can also do this on a cell basis. We have a new system in my laboratory where we can pick up a single heart muscle cell and stretch it and measure the force from that single cell. And then finally, this is a very exciting time for stem cells. And stem cells, uh, we can actually generate stem cells from patients with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy in a collaboration with uh, Joe Wu here at Stanford and really refresh those cells so that they, they, we take skin cells and then uh, his laboratory can refresh them so that they can then become some other kind of cell. And in this case, we can push them along the road towards becoming a heart cell and then measure them in our system. So it's really a very exciting combination of, of researchers all the way from a molecular researcher right through to using uh, research in our, from our clinical uh, patients. So there's a number of things we don't understand about the process um, whereby a gene mutation in one of these proteins from the molecular motors causes this thickness or causes these dangerous rhythms in the heart. And what we want to try and do is understand for the first time that, that process. How does a single letter change? We have six, six billion single letters in our genome. And a change in just one of them is enough to cause this condition. And there's a lot we don't understand about how that happens. And so we think by stripping the process down and looking, looking at it from the single cell level and then putting it together in a, in a cell where we can stretch a whole cell and then looking forward to the patient to see what the heart looks like in three dimensions in the patient, that we can understand the disease in a way that never has, has been done before. Well, one of the challenges at the moment is that we have very few therapies that really work for hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. We can ask our surgeons to go in and take out some of the extra heart muscle. We can ask our electrophysiology cardiologists to put in an implantable defibrillator that can protect our, our patients from dangerous rhythms. There's even a, a treatment strategy where we go in and cause a heart attack by injecting alcohol into one of the arteries in the heart. So these, these things can help, but none of them really get to the root cause of the condition, which is genetic. And so only really by understanding how that genetic condition causes this heart muscle can we really derive a therapy that can help the root cause rather than the palliative therapies we have at the moment. So separately in the lab, we are thinking very strongly about a genetic therapy, something that can target the very top. But most people believe at the moment that the most likely new therapies will come from understanding the immediately downstream mechanism whereby this genetic mutation causes this thickening. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot of thought that maybe there's a final common pathway for hypertrophy. And when the heart muscle gets bigger, that there's a kind of common road for, for which all these different, if you have high blood pressure or a valve disease, that can also cause the heart to get bigger. And there's an idea that maybe all these things travel down a common road, and that if we can find that road, we can put a roadblock there and, and stop this happening. So one really important resource that we uh, have here is, the, is, is a tissue bank and, and patient registry. And this was uh, made possible by a very generous donation from, a, from a, an a found, outside foundation. We have been able to gather over 2,500 patients into the registry and uh, almost 1,000 tissue samples along with a DNA bank, which really allows us an unparalleled resource for looking at the genetic causes of conditions and for really looking towards a day when we can do personalized medicine. That is, we can think about the individual and, and individualize their treatment according to their own genome. And this has been something that's been a huge benefit to us here and has allowed multiple collaborations with lots of different groups. Um, well, we're always on the lookout for, for uh, new possibilities, and particularly uh, we're interested in new therapies. 
okay? And I think this grant will allow us really an understanding of the disease process that we have not had before. But we really want to be able to test different therapies. And we have great resources here at Stanford to allow us to look at new therapies and screen for new therapies. But then we have to go forward and test them. And that, of course, is time consuming and, and needs resources. And so we would love to be able to, to go forward and test those things all the way through to clinical trials because we have enough patients here who would benefit that we'd really like to do that for them.